Many of you are struggling to understand compression when mixing modern metal drums. And I was the same. I am still adjusting to a super compressed modern metal sound landscape where every element is crushed and therefore sounds huge. And like me, you may be still learning how much compression is too much and how much isn't enough. Similarly, you may wonder which elements of the drum kit need heavy compression and how. In series, parallel compression, single compressor, etc. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the session where we mixed programmed modern mill drums and you can learn the compression side of it. Let's do it. No compression, mate. Sounds okay. And now this is compressed and somewhat level matched. So much more punch, energy and just a tighter, more modern sound. Exactly what you want. Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Tubeskov, the mad scientist of metal, and I'm here to bring valuable information on metal production and mixing. Like and subscribe, mate, to not miss it out. Let's go! There are so many amazing tutorials here on YouTube regarding modern metal, metalcore, deathcore, drum compression, and I myself learned a ton of cool tricks of applying this sound to drums. However, this can be really confusing to understand why compress elements this certain way. And in my experience, different producers approach compression differently and with different plugins, which doesn't simplify your life, unfortunately. So, let's go through the session here, which is once again tight slash sound outside multi tracks. Hope you're not sick of it. And I will first show you the layout of drum compression in this session and then talk about their purposing. All right, so first thing first, I would like to walk you through the session so that you can navigate this fully with me here. We got our drums here, which is a virtual instrument, Superior Drama 3. And they sound decent, and so Superior Drama 3 provides a clean signal which you can push uh, towards the sound that you want. This has been split into separate channels, so kick is a separate channel, snare is a separate channel, toms, uh, rooms, overheads. Then I fed a kick into a sample channel, similarly snare, and then they go into a kick and snare bus. All of that goes into drums output bus, which is then fed into two parallel compressor channels and some reverb. Now let's talk about the actual compressors that has been used and how many. Starting with the kick, on the kick we used a distressor, followed by a Pro C2. On a kick sample, we used just an 1176. All the usual contenders for you. Snare has been compressed heavily with a distressor. Snare sample has been compressed with a Pro C2. Snare and kick bus has been compressed with a different version of 1176 in parallel, with about 25% of compressed signal blended in. We'll talk about that later. For toms, we also use Pro C2. For rooms, a R1 by Kush Audio was a really cool compressor. And for overheads, we used LA2A. Now the drum bus has been compressed with an SSL compressor. Again, dry wet about 60%. Uh, next, for parallel compressors, we used UBK1. Very good for parallel compression and Silica, all by Kush Audio. Two different parallel channels. And then the reverb has been tightened by this Novatron compressor as well, just a little bit. So I think this is good enough to start diving into these compressors and seeing what in particular they do. Let's focus on the actual thinking process of why applying compression. You shouldn't just compress because it's a go-to method for drums. Try to listen to the element and understand exactly what it lacks and what you could bring to the table with compression. Such considerations are extra punch and attack or extra sustain, therefore manipulating the transient. 
low-end consistency. Sometimes, if you apply compression the right way, the low-end of your kick would be tighter and would not fall out of the mix as it would otherwise. Increasing loudness of the element. If you compress a drum, you can bring up the RMS level and make the drum louder without actually riding the volume fader. You can add glue, energy and sparkle to your elements. The main example here would be a snare drum. And you can make drums cut through the mix better with compression a certain way. Okay, let's move on to considering the elements of the kit and seeing exactly what has been compressed and how. Let's start with the kick and listen to an uncompressed kick. So, I want to start with the purpose. Why do we want to compress a kick? Well, this kick to me sounds a little bit flubby, a little bit raw, and it would not cut through the mix in this instance. Let's see what happens if we compress it with a distressor, with these settings. So, slow attack, fast-ish release, but not the fastest, uh, 4 to 1, and about 3 decibels of gain reduction. Let's see what happens. Before... So what I instantly notice by adding the distressor is that the kick becomes punchier and more defined. And I really like that. If I bring up the release to zero, see what happens. I dislike the fastest release setting because the kick loses all the character. And if we compress more... It just doesn't sound right to me. These are the good starting point settings. And we have impacted the kick a certain way, which was desired. Next, we followed up on the kick by a Pro C2. Let's see what it does and why. But firstly, what's the consideration here? The consideration here is that the kick is flabby at the low end. See what happens if we add this setting of a compressor to the kick. See how the low end is tight now and it doesn't jump at you and doesn't build up, but it still retains the punch? That sounds cool to me. This compressor in series with the distressor actually pushes the kick to become louder and gives it more body, which is very desired in modern metal. So, if I listen to this one, it sounds super raw and it actually sounds a bit roomy, which is a good thing because we can carve the direct kick mic inside of a kick room sample and that creates a fuller picture of the kick. But it sounds super flabby and it wouldn't let the actual kick cut through the mix. So, uh, that's the consideration to compress here. Uh, we used 1176. Let's see what it does. Once again, more punch, retains the character, pushes it forward. Moving on to the snare. Here is our direct snare mic from Superior Drama 3. To me it just sounds super raw and I really hate it. We can use a distressor and really slam it hard with slow-ish attack and fast-ish release again. This setting for the distressor brings up the transient and snap for the snare and makes it much more aggressive. But I would encourage you to be really careful with such compression because if you add too much, you can easily lose body of your snare 
and all you hear is a teeny tiny transient rather than snap body. So be careful with this. This THD brings up some harmonics to the snare, saturates it and pushes it forward too. Let's take a look at the snare sample now. So similar philosophy here, it's a roomy snare sample that carves in the direct mic in the mix and all the rooms require some compression so that they sound tighter and thicker and we can add more sustain with compression for the room so that the tail sounds like an explosion. That's the goal here, let's see what we can do. See how much more explosive it became? And I used slower attack and medium release, not the fastest release, because that emphasizes the body and the sustain of the snare, which is desired for room signals to fill in the blanks of the mix. Moving on to Tom's approach this somewhat similarly to a snare. Let's take a listen. They just sound really raw and loose to me and do not have enough attack. So let's see what we can add by compressing them. It sounds better. They smack harder and the low end is more consistent, which is very important with toms. Let's check out the overheads, as this is the overall sound of your drum kit, as well as cymbals. Yep. So for the moment they just sound a little weak and we can improve that by adding slow compression with slow attack and slow release, something like an opto tube compressor like this one. This is very easy to use as well. And the goal here is to not let the compressor pump the cymbals, but to tighten up the possible kick interference and the snare in the overheads. And just saturate it, enhance it and glue it. And this does that for sure. Finally, the rooms. For rooms, you may compress them very aggressively to let the explosive sound and sustain build and then blend them in. <laughs> Let's take a look at the whole drum mix and rebalance the elements accordingly. It's starting to come up really good. Now let's take a look at the buses as this hasn't been compressed yet. Let's start with the kick and snare bus and see what happens if we add some extra parallel compression to it? To me this just sounds more finished and more mix ready, more modernized. You may be struggling to understand the principle behind parallel or serial compression and the application of dry-wet ratio. Compress in series to add what the initial compressor was lacking. You can combine characters and you can push your plugins a bit less, therefore not introducing artifacts, but still getting the full compressed picture as much as you wish. And the combination of the elements provides you with unique results. Leave some of the dry, uncompressed signal for a less artificial sound. This allows to not overcompress and not let your drums sound teeny and too clicky if you are on the brink of it. Uh, see what happens if we bring it to serial, so 100% wet. This is way too much. 
Now this is just right. You may play around with your dry wet ratio so that you achieve a more realistic sound yet still retain all the good things about the compression. Similarly, the drum bus, classical drum bus compressor, the SSL legendary one can do two hour drums and I'm using just two to one very mild compression 30 millisecond attack this lowest fastest release your default settings and this is all blended in parallel as well although a bit more let's see what it does See how the kick becomes more carved in and the snare gains even more punch? If I use 100% wet mix, it just falls out and it sounds too compressed, too sterile. But in this setting here, it kinda gains a different character in a non-obstructive way, which I really, really enjoy. Next, we can take a look at the parallel compressors. A little bit of a disclosure here. You may find that subtle differences between different parallel compressors pushed hard impact your mix heavily. So I would encourage you to experiment with different plugins for your parallel compression and come up with the best ones that really fit the music the most. Starting off with this UBK one. So this just sounds nasty and slammed, bumps and breathes with the tempo of the music. You bring this heavily obstructed element in parallel with the actual drums and you do not impact the dry signal, but you kind of bring in the blanket to fill in the space in the mix and add that aggressive character to the overall drums. That's why I encourage you to experiment with different flavors here, as if we move on to the second pearl compressor, it will sound completely different. Check it out. See how much more aggressive and distorted it is? It doesn't sound as slammed as the first one, but it certainly serves as a different purpose. And now if we solo them and rebalance them together, see how much more they add to the picture. And now with the actual drums, I just love this sort of aggression, it just sounds very exciting to me, and you may find that too. And now, here's the result all together. Sounds pretty bombastic to me. I hope that you enjoy this. So, I hope that this little demonstration has been useful. I know that the layout has been somewhat complicated, but I did my best to explain the reasoning and explain what each element does. If you have any questions, never hesitate to hit me up in comments or send me an email. I'm here to help. And until next time, rock on!